there is some debate as to whether placebos and nocebos have a place in medicine. The problem with prescribing placebos is that it is, it is considered unethical to let a patient believe that they are being given true medication when they're not. However, placebos are used all around the world for varying diseases, and New Zealand is no different. The placebo effect is a beneficial effect which is produced by a placebo, which is a medication or a procedure prescribed for psychological benefit rather than for any physiological. It can't be attributed to the properties of the placebo itself and must therefore be down to a person's beliefs in that treatment. The adverse effect is the nocebo effect, which is derived from placebo. The nocebo effect is when a detrimental effect on health is produced by psychological or psychosomatic factors, such as negative expectations to treatment or prognosis. Research on the placebo effect has focused on the relationship of mind and body. One of the most common theories is that the pl placebo effect is down to a person's expectations. If a person expects a medication to do something, then it's highly likely that the body's own chemistry can cause effects similar to what a real medication may have caused. Experts also say that there is a relationship between how strongly a person expects to have results and whether or not results occur. The stronger the feeling, the more likely it is that positive health benefits will occur. There may be a profound effect due to the interaction between a patient and a healthcare provider. The same is true for negative effects. If people expect to have side effects such as headaches or nausea or drowsiness, it is highly likely that these are the effects that are going to come up. The fact that the placebo effect is down to expectations doesn't make it fake or imaginary. Some studies show that there are actual physical changes that occur with the placebo effect. For example, some studies have shown an increase in the body's production of endorphins, which are one of the body's natural pain relievers. Opioid receptors are found in the brain, spinal cord, and other organs. When medications attach themselves to these receptors, they can reduce the perception of pain. PET and MRI scans were used to create the above image, which shows the activity of the MU opioid receptor in the brain. The top image shows, that the, stu shows the study participants that were experiencing pain. On the bottom, the study participants thought that they were receiving a pain medication that was, in reality, a placebo. The scale to the right is showing the different zones. When z-score is less than 1.81, it is in distress zones. When it is higher than 2.99, it is in safe zones. And when z-score is between these two numbers, it is in grey zones. The images showing the placebo effect show more of the safe area. Whilst if we look at that with which the participants were experiencing pain, there is more of the distress zones, which is the green areas. This shows that those that were taking a placebo for their pain were advantageously affected. Along with the placebo effect, the nocebo effect is still being studied. Researchers believe that it may be explained by a substance in the body that sends signals along the nerves. For example, if a person is anxious, they're likely to experience more pain than a person who is calm. This effect can be seen in the brain, and imaging studies have shown that pain is more intense when a person expects it than when they do not. And this is linked to changes in certain brain regions. The effect of placebos has been long researched in the past, and there are many pros to these procedures. The body has powerful natural recuperative abilities, and a placebo can help facilitate this. This is because when the human mind believes it is being given pain medication, it releases a larger amount of endorphins, which, as I said before, are one of the body's natural pain relievers. When giving patients placebos instead, it has the same effect, and the body is using more natural remedies in order to reduce pain. Placebos act as a psychological boost, so a person's positive attitude may be important in recovery. This also brings in the nocebo effect. If a patient does not believe that a treatment will work, placebo or not, then it is highly likely that it will be detrimental to their health. When working with placebos, if people believe that their treatment is going to work, 
it gives them a positive attitude, and so positive health benefits can occur. As is with everything, with pros there also come cons, and the placebo effect is no different. There is a chance that with chronic pain conditions or mood disorders, patients can show spontaneous improvement. This may not have anything to do with the placebo provided, and it's a mere coincidence that this improvement has occurred at the same time. Placebo effects can result from the mere contact with doctors, or even just the diagnosis of a problem. Simple attention from a respected medical professional alleviates anxiety. This renders the prescription of these placebos moot, and it doesn't have any benefit on their health. There is also the chance that a patient, in order to appease a doctor, might report benefit when no benefit has occurred, and this is known as the politeness effect. <laughs> placebos are used for a variety of things, from depression to anxiety to weight loss, and, the and there have recently been studies in using placebos for vaccines. For some products, such as the influenza vaccine, there is very little data comparing the biological agent with a placebo. For the introduction of any new vaccine, standard procedure is a controlled clinical trial using an inert placebo, such as saline, which is delivered to a control group. A survey in New Zealand was conducted five years ago, its aim being to determine how accepting patients were to the use of placebos, their willingness to uh, participate in trials, and to examine their beliefs about the treatments. A questionnaire survey was administered to 211 general practice patients in socioeconomically divergent areas of Auckland. This questionnaire obtained self-report of willingness to accept various clinical uses of placebos, willingness to participate in placebo-controlled con clinical trials, with reasons for and against participation, and beliefs about the placebo effect. One of the problems with placebos is ethics, and many people believe that it is unethical to give people placebos when they could be given true medication. However, Guideline 11 of the International Ethical Guidelines for Biomedical Research states that it is accepting to use a placebo if the use of that placebo would not add any risk of serious or irreversible harm. The conclusion of the New Zealand survey was that many patients accept the use of placebos, which suggests that the major issues with placebo use, which appear to be deception or lack of informed consent, are tolerated by the patients surveyed. Many of the people surveyed were willing to participate in a trial, and the most recurring reason in the questionnaire was in order to support the development of new medications in order to help other patients. Patients seemed to underestimate the effectiveness of the placebo and attribute its effect to personality. And they generally seemed to lack understanding of this effect. But in general, many people seem to accept the use of them. Aaron Carroll researched the effects of the placebo effect when 180 patients that had osteoarthritis in the knee were randomly assigned to one of three groups with consent. The first group had a standard arthroscopic procedure, the second had lavage, and the third was given a sham surgery where an incision was given and then sewn back up again. Carroll said that the results were stunning. He said that those that had the, pr the proper procedures did no better than those who had the fake surgery. The results were all in people's heads. Carroll's conclusion was that medical professionals should stop doing procedures that work no better than a placebo. He concluded that they should substitute placebos and placebo surgeries because they were cheaper. <laughs> Cost-benefit analysis has been conducted on the placebo effect in order to determine how this effect could benefit both New Zealand and the world economically. Though very few differences were found be um, between the effects that a true medication gave and the effects that a placebo gave, there was a large difference in the cost. It was determined that placebos were between 30 to 50% cheaper than real medications. Now, I'm not saying substitute all medications for placebos, because that would be ridiculous. Not everything can be treated with placebos, but it does show that the use of these foam medications could economically benefit in medical practice. The placebo effect extends further than medicine. 
scientists believe that using placebo effects could help regulate the economy. That is, instead of spending a billion dollars to implement complex economic policies that very few people understand, why not spend a fraction of that on policies that people do understand, but inform them of how great and powerful the new policy is? In fact, the single most effective use of the placebo effect was during the European debt crisis, when Governor Draghi made a vague declaration saying that the bank would do whatever it takes in order to support indebted Eurozone members. Without saying anything specific, Draghi calmed the markets and allowed countries such as Italy to continue borrowing. In the results of the survey I mentioned before, the most common res response to why people would participate in a placebo-controlled trial was in order to support the development of new medications in order to help other patients. If this doesn't scream social benefit, I don't know what does. Placebo-controlled trials are used in order to develop medications further, and this is where everyone unites. Everyone wants the same thing. They want new treatments that will help people, and these clinical trials can help, uh, can help facilitate this. One problem with the placebo effect is that it can be difficult to distinguish from the actual effects of a real drug during a study. Finding ways to distinguish between the placebo effect and the effect of treatment may help improve the treatment and lower the cost of drug testing. And more study may also lead to ways to using the power of the placebo in treating diseases. Overall, the benefits of the placebo effect far outweigh any risks. Placebos increase the amount of endorphins released in the brain by attaching to the opioid receptors. And so the body is using more natural remedies in order to reduce pain. The use of the placebo effect in New Zealand medicine provides the opportunity for more development of drugs in order to help patients and can also lower the cost of medications, making it more economically beneficial. The effects of a placebo are far less dangerous than some of the medications produced. And so by using these trials, medicine is advancing and creating safer medications. Obviously not everything can be treated with placebos, and real medications do need to be prescribed to many people. However, the use of placebos in medical practice can be beneficial in the social, economic, and even environmental aspects, which is what Sir Paul Callaghan's vision was all about. And therefore, the use of the placebo effect should be highly considered in future medical practice, or even just in everyday life. Thank you. Thank you, Dana. The differential between the cost of the placebo and the meds, mm -hmm. I would have thought would have been much bigger, given that a placebo is nothing, right? It does depend on the, um, on the thing that is being used. Uh, medications, placebo medications, are generally sugar pills. Yes. And so they will be incredibly cheap to make. So yes, it would be um, uh, a lot higher than 30 to 50%. Um, however, you can also get the placebo surgeries, which they do need the money in order to prepare no, the theatre rooms I and all that sort of thing. I understand the surgery would be at some cost. In the event of a, of a placebo surgery, is the patient ever told that it was in fact fake? They're told at the beginning that they could be given a real procedure or a fake procedure. It is, up to, it is completely up to the patient whether or not they are willing to participate in this. All patients, if they are to be given a placebo uh, treatment, have to give consent. Uh, that, that is the law. Um, and so they are told that they could be given a placebo treatment. However, they're not told if they were part of that group that got the placebo treatment, because the entire effect is that it could have been, but they don't know. However willing people are to take part in a placebo trial, <coughs> the ethics would mean that it's unlikely, would they not? The ethics... As, as I said before, as long as the placebo doesn't add any risk of harm, it is completely legal to use placebos. How do you know it wouldn't add risk of harm? Well, that is where the research comes in, and all placebos do need to be researched before they are put into practice. Um, in the 
instance of medications, it's generally safe unless they are allergic to sugar. But it's not the placebos you need to research, is it? It's the absence of the alternative you need to Exactly, research. and that's where not everything can be treated with placebos. Uh, for instance, heart conditions, they couldn't be treated with uh, placebo surgery. Why not? Well, because heart conditions are generally because of blockages in the arteries. Um, they're due to the, uh, the, the anticoagulants in the blood uh, not functioning uh, as they should. And so the arteries in the heart uh, block up, and that causes things like heart attacks. But how do you know that's not treatable with placebo? Well, the thing is, I don't personally, and that is where the research has to come in. <laughs> so according to what you've said, it would seem that doctors should never tell people bad news, should never say, I'm sorry, your illness is incurable, because they extinguish hope and thereby extinguish the chance that a placebo treatment would work? Well, that again does depend. Uh, in China, for instance, if someone is uh, going to be, uh, if someone is dying, the doctors don't tell them that they're dying. And their lifespan is actually a lot longer than ours. Uh, if you told a person that they had cancer, chances are they're going to suffer uh, because of that far more than if you hadn't told them. And now I'm not saying don't tell people if they're ill. What are you saying then? What I'm saying is that it is important to keep that hope. Um, telling people that they're dying has a far greater risk of them dying sooner than not telling them. So what should a doctor do if you're not saying not tell people that they're dying? What should they do? Well, that, once again, depends on the condition. So yeah. if... if <laughs> yeah. If a doctor believes that a, pl a placebo treatment may help them, then they are perfectly within their rights, as long as the patient gives consent uh, to give them that placebo treatment. So the, the patient would say, Doc, I know I'm dying, but don't tell me, because I think I could fix myself here. Obviously, there, there, there are definitely some problems that would arise with this. Um, but no, I, I understand completely what you're saying. Um, generally, it's placebo uh, treatments are not given to the ones that, are, that do have limited lifespans. Um, in the case of uh, osteoarthritis Which, sorry, in the knee... Sorry to interrupt, but that would seem to be the right. obvious use for placebos, right? Because nothing else is going to do any damn use. <laughs> do you think homeopathy is the placebo effect? Sorry, what was that? Do you think homeopathy is the placebo effect? Well, it could be. Um, it... The placebo effect is, as I said before, it's a beneficial effect produced by you believing in, uh, that something is going to work. And so uh, if, if you don't believe that it's going to work, it's not going to be the placebo effect. So in uh, reality, for some people, it could be. Thank you. <laughs>